Greetings. My name is Rick Wickstrom. I serve as the president of the Occupational Health Special Interest Group in the Academy of Orthopedic Physical Therapy. And I'm here today to talk about a motion that was born in the Occupational Health SIG, but is applicable across all practice settings um, as, a, as a motion to move our profession forward. I'm gonna share a brief slide deck with you and uh, to provide some background information and, uh, and better understanding about the intent of our motion. The title of our motion is RC 1122, Access to Physical Therapist as Entry Point Practitioners for Activity Participation, Wellness, Health, and disability determination. The, the two individuals that I've worked with most closely on this motion are the vice president of our occupational health SIG, Steve Allison, who's a practitioner like myself in uh, Louisiana. And Steve has been uh, uh, a great mentor towards, to me, um, to become a DOT certified medical examiner. And also with James Spencer, who's a very inclusive leader of the Academy of Orthopedic Physical Therapy. Um, and, and, and James is the practice chair and the chief delegate and the incoming uh, vice president. So we're all excited about this motion and what it can do to create opportunities for our profession. I've been long a fan of the military model. For 50 years, physical therapists in the military setting have prescribed medicines, referred for imaging, um, restricted um, uh, uh, soldiers to appropriate uh, activities. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we have been slow to take the evidence that's come out of the military model and make um, entry point care a, uh, a consistent reality uh, for physical therapists. So our purpose is to clarify the expertise and role of physical therapists in entry point care for activity participation, wellness, movement, health, and disability management and determination. We want to inspire advocacy by members to remove barriers in all areas of PT practice. And some of the low hanging fruit is not regulatory barriers, but it's our own image of our profession and how we present our abilities to do um, critical aspects of care, such as making a uh, differential diagnosis. We want to drive improvements to APTA core documents and also to the Federal um, uh, Model Practice Act and regulations that, um, that influence uh, entry point care. In my uh, area of specialization, occupational health, uh, our goal is to become the primary treating uh, practitioner uh, of a workers' comp claimant, and to um, uh, and to do so, we have to be have language that speaks to our ability to diagnose causality and determine disability for work-related claims conditions. And um, I'm so proud that uh, North Dakota has accomplished this as the first state in 2022, and we want to build on their accomplishment. In my state of Ohio, the athletic trainers who I respect uh, modified their definition of athletic training to include language about establishing the cause and nature of a patient's injury, emerging condition, or functional impairment. And this uh, language um, is important to, to position um, the athletic trainers. It's also important for physical therapists to position us at the uh, sidelines of uh, athletic, uh, athletic uh, events and also in other forums such as uh, workers' compensation plans. One of my uh, challenges um, and concerns is that uh, youth sports organizations oftentimes uh, uh, fail to include physical therapists in their forms. And, um, and these are very simple exams uh, that are intended to promote safe participation and not to screen people out of uh, uh, participation in healthy physical activity. Uh, in the medical eligibility form, they uh, they note that the 
individual that can perform the exams are MDs, DOs, doctors of chiropractor, who I uh, feel that we're equally qualified uh, as physical therapists to do this, uh, nurse practitioners and physical therapy assistants. And it's uh, it's truly a cancer and a, a black mark on our profession that we're not listed on this form because it creates a misperception to youth and their parents very early on that physical therapists are not entry point providers. Even a, a, a national organization um, such as the Special Olympics, uh, and APTA is a partner with the Special Olympics Committee, uh, has a, a notation on their form that um, that the athletic medical form, the physical exam, must be completed by a licensed medical provider qualified to conduct exams and prescribe medications. And I would argue that the prescriptive authority to prescribe medications should not be extended um, as, a, as a requirement to, to do other kinds of prescriptions that physical therapists can do that relate to activity participation. Now, I often ask myself, well, why is the root cause of the sports organization barriers? And it's because the guidelines for, for pre-participation physical evaluations are completely dominated by medical societies. And these are consensus-based uh, documents that their own societies acknowledge they're not evidence-based. And, and, uh, and the, the survey information indicates that only about two out of every 20,000 exams actually had major findings that limited uh, sports participation. And 26% uh, and of uh, physicians that are surveyed said they don't even do a physical exam to provide uh, a, a clearance for uh, youth sports participation. So this is a real important opportunity for, for us to, um, and it's unfortunate that we don't have a seat at the table in developing these guidelines and we need to develop guidelines of our own that will um, strengthen our role in this um, uh, important uh, activity clearance process. Uh, we've set important precedent in six states that physical therapists are qualified to perform Department of Transportation physical exams of commercial vehicle drivers. And this is a public safety issue and it provides compelling evidence that we're qualified to perform uh, simpler sports um, participation exams and, and other activities such as um, you know, prescribing handicapped placards and whatnot that, um, that utilize our unique skills and identity as physical therapists. Chiropractors are authorized in all the states, and I am hopeful that our motion will motivate uh, physical therapists in all 50 states uh, to become certified medical examiners. The, 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 the medical examiner uh, duties in a physical exam for a DOT physical are um, uh, utilize skills that are routinely performed by physical therapists in various specialty practice areas. Uh, the cardiovascular specialists routinely check uh, and listen to hearts and lungs. The, the pelvic health specialists routinely palpate the abdomen for hernias and whatnot. And these are all learnable skills that, um, that can be uh, advanced through um, the mandatory continuing education requirements for taking the CME exam, as well as just shadowing um, other health practitioners, such as nurse practitioners, to build confidence and skills, such as listening, um, palpating to the chest and whatnot. Now, in, in becoming qualified for these simpler exams and uh, as a routine basis across all states, we're better positioning physical therapists to be acknowledged by Social Security Administration that, that it's within our scope of practice to provide opinions to SSI about the severity of physical limitations and how those physical limitations interfere with patients and clients' abilities to perform work activities. Uh, this is a big need. Um, uh, Social Security dis disability recipients that we serve in our clinics, oftentimes they need um, examinations um, by uh, knowledgeable uh, practitioners such as physical therapists to support um, or justify their need for benefits. And um, unfortunately, we have not been qualified by SSA because uh, they're, they're making a presumption that the licensing requirements for physical therapists are not at a similar level of consistency or rigor in education, training, education, and scope of practice. So we have work to do in this area, but 
but establishing a stronger basis in sports and DOT physicals and workers' compensation uh, entry point care will do nothing but um, strengthen our um, el eligibility and recognition for doing this. Our motion will be replacing an existing motion for disability evaluation and determination. We've incorporated basically the same language, but we further added other language. And this motion began with a simple motion that says physical therapists are qualified to, uh, to, uh, to, to justify the need for handicapped or disability parking placards. So as I look at our motion language, it is bold in asserting and not sugarcoating that we provide a broad range of services that include um, diagnosis and prognosis and referral to other healthcare practitioners. And that we include important language in our motion that we identify the cause and or nature of injuries and symptoms and conditions and impairments um, and, and uh, uh, participation restrictions and environmental barriers and facilitators. And we're not sugarcoating that we perform a diagnosis and that we utilize relevant diagnosis diagnostic testing measures and use uh, at classification labels that could come from the ICF or it could come from the uh, ICD uh, coding structure by the World Health Organization. So our, our, our unique spot as professionals is to determine functioning and the extent of disability and to influence um, improvements in that area. And we do this uh, with our own areas of, of expertise regarding either prescriptive uh, authority or to um, recommend appropriate physical activities and accommodations and adaptive and assistive technology and diagnostic tests and other interventions that optimize functioning and participation. So I hope you will join me in, um, in endorsing and voting um, for this motion. Uh, we're, we're still, um, because it, it's a key outward facing message that we need to be all more consistent about uh, uh, speaking to um, as we interact with organizations that, that uh, are making judgments about our profession without really having a good understanding of our full scope of expertise.